Nashville City Council. He's the guy you read about. Vote was six to one. That's a that's a dubious nickname. We love you, Carl. Six, six to one. <laughs> Appreciate the comments of Senator Shubert. Give them a hand, Rep Carl. Representative Thomas. Appreciate the folks who organized this, and more than anybody, appreciate you all for coming out. Uh, most people are home mowing the grass, they're at the movies, they're out playing in some form or fashion, they're out enjoying the good life that this special culture and country that we live in affords them. You all are here trying to do something about preserving it, and I'm personally grateful for that. I have an interest. I serve on Asheville City Council. I serve uh, reluctantly. I was kidnapped to serve is the best phrase I can use for it. I don't have a good time. I consider it a responsibility, not a fun thing. Uh, I wish it could be. Some people seem to enjoy this more than I do. But as I serve, I look for those opportunities to focus on essential issues versus exotic issues. An example of exotic issues, I appreciated Representative Thomas's comment about uh, some of the, the, the exciting things that comes before his body. Uh, this coming Tuesday on our consent agenda for the City Council is $15,000 in state money that we're going to receive for a butterfly exhibit. Mm. I've asked that to be pulled from the agenda so at least we can have a vote on it, the consent agenda, and it will be 6-1. We will have our butterflies. <laughs> That's kind of me. I consider butterflies nice but exotic. Illegal immigration is something else. That's essential. I'm cynical about this issue uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, I don't believe our safety is, is yet adequately threatened to stir people up. This issue is like a cancer versus a heart attack. You know, my, I start grabbing my chest right now and it's hurting like heck. I'm going to start paying attention to my health. But if I have a hidden cancer I don't know about, I'm just as likely to diddy bump along and not pay attention. And it will kill me just as surely, just maybe a little bit more slowly. Our Congress is paralyzed. You know, their latest approval rating, and I say latest, I believe this was in the, the past week, is 14%. I think El... I think Al-Qaeda has a higher... <laughs> and it's both sides of the aisle. I have no respect. I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative Christian Republican. I have absolutely no respect for the way my party has handled themselves in Washington. I'm cynical about this issue because we are not willing or able to enforce our existing laws, much less embrace new ones. I was, uh, I try to learn by doing or watching other people do. Uh, I spend a lot of time with our police. One of our essential issues in this community is drug enforcement or the lack thereof. Uh, Representative Thomas mentioned that he, he saw, we didn't have time to talk about it, but he said he saw a drug deal in Pritchard Park, I believe today. We have an open air drug market in Asheville. I try to learn about that. I'm not a policeman, but I'm in charge or at least I'm responsible for my piece of the policy equation. So I try to learn by watching, and I spent an evening in the jail. I actually spent the night in the jail a couple of years ago. They arrested me, took me all the way through it. There was one person in the jail that no, knew I hadn't done anything wrong. <laughs> Thank goodness he didn't have any health troubles that night. <laughs> but I learned from being in jail that way. I learned from watching them arrest folks uh, and, and process them in the jail a few months ago. While I was there, they brought in a young man who had, uh, over on uh, Patton Avenue, had pulled up beside a law enforcement car and tilted up a, a 40. Uh, several of you probably know what a 40 is. Uh, malt liquor. 
right beside the police officer and then looked over at him and grinned. And the officer didn't appreciate that. <laughs> he arrested him. The young man didn't have a, an ID, didn't have a driver's license. Now in the past, and I've got a bag full of them, I meant to bring them, uh, it was pat very common. They would have, you can buy these things for $25 to $50 a piece. They would have multiple IDs. Uh, we have officers that have arrested a guy with as many as a half a dozen IDs in his pocket. And driver's license is fake, of course, but enough to get you by. But he didn't even bother, and, and I, I got to talking to him. He spoke English. He said, uh, I don't need a license. They will arrest me. They will charge me. They will let me go in the morning, and I will go away. <laughs> and unless I'm unfortunate enough to get caught again accidentally, there's nothing they can do to me. They can't find me. They don't know who I am. And they're not going to call the INS for me. I don't need to worry about that. He knew it all, and he was right. And you could see the officers gritting their teeth. And I talked to them, and their frustration. We're not enforcing our existing laws. I have very little faith we're going to enforce new ones. We're being systematically, another reason I'm cynical, is we're being systematically tranquilized by our leaders, our advocates, excuse me, their advocates, the illegal immigrants, the media, and our own complacent self-interest. We like cheap chicken. And we're willing to overlook things to have cheap chicken. Another reason I'm cynical is the finger of accountability has drifted from what we can control <coughs> to what we can't. Got in a lot of trouble in a recent uh, event on Black Asheville. And they kept talking about the federal government needs to do this about racial problems and the county government needs to do this and these people need to do that and the white people need to do this. And I was one of the few members of the panel who was white. And I said to these folks, and it was my honor to be there, by the way, and it went, most of it went very well. I was, I was proud of the effort to be honest <laughs> in, in the room. But about one thing, they were not being honest. And that was, it's everybody else's fault, and my solutions to my problems are going to come through their hands. And when I challenged that room and said, hey, we need to quit talking about what they're going to do, we need to talk about what we're going to do, because we're losing too many of our black young men and women in the wrong way. And it's time for us to grab hold of this and start saving souls. And, and I thought, well, I thought I was in trouble at one point. But I got through it okay, and it turned out for the better. But it's an example of how we've just become a, a, a country, not all of us, but a lot of people, who are real good at pointing the finger. A classic example of that is right here in this city. I catch all kind of, of heck because I'm, I'm really pushing on this drug issue, drug issue. Now my piece, public safety is job one for Asheville City. Job one, as far as I'm concerned. And that's the piece that I deal with as a policymaker on our city council. So that's where I need to put, apply my accountability. But what I found from day one is our police, and they're right, but it doesn't help. They point the finger at the courts. The courts point the finger at this gentleman and his colleagues. This gentleman and his colleagues point the finger at the rest of us because they don't have the money to do everything. And then we point our fingers, and everybody's pointing their fingers, fingers going in all directions except for I did. Well, I decided enough of that. I'm going to put the hammer down where I am. And we'll start with our police and our budget. We're going to go after this open-air drug market in Asheville, and as we clean up our act, that will enable us to go after some of the other pieces of the puzzle.